hey what is up youtube welcome to another youtube video today we're gonna upgrade the boosted board esc into a vesk fuck box unity so without further ado let's get right into it for this upgrade i have a few choices as you can see i have the unity i have the original inertion vesk x as you can see here the original fuck box i have a few one of those I have the Flip Sky 6.6. And you can see another fog box. So I prefer the fog box Unity, so we're gonna go ahead and use that. Take a look at the ESC. Right. As you can see, the previous owner did some DIY work, adding an external battery connection. So I applied some voltage onto the ESC, and as you can see, it's still working perfectly fine. My quick setup just to test the motors and as you can see it's working perfectly fine hesitation and the hissing is because I didn't connect the sensor wires as you can see here I'm gonna wire them up the sensor wires are soldered as you can see now I'm gonna connect them right here alright so now this is all set as you can see the sensor wires are connected everything is good i was planning to reuse the original enclosure but uh it's a little too small for the new setup so i'm just gonna go ahead and design a brand new enclosure uh, for the new vesk I'm gonna go ahead and configure the vest while the new enclosure is 3D printing. Alright, so let's go ahead and connect the USB C to the vest. Also, have it connected to the computer. Battery connected and the vest turned on. Alright, and then we're gonna go online. I will put the link in the video description to this web page. This is where you download the software required to uh, program the Vest Unity. Alright, so you're gonna go ahead and choose the version for your computer. The 
this PC. So I'm going to select the PC version. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, download it, which is the first one right here. Download. All right, we're going to open it. Then we're going to launch it. All right, so this is the Fogbox tool. Click on connect. All right, the connected Fogbox has two old firmware. It can be updated uh, from the firmware page. Until then, limited communication mode will be used where only firmware can be changed. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, update the firmware first. So we're gonna go to the left hand side and we're gonna click on firmware. And as you can see, it detected that we connected to Unity. And uh, here is the firmware, the unity.bin. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, update the firmware. This is the current version. The firmware is version 5.3 and the hardware is Unity. All right, and then we have the supported firmwares on the right over here and we have the progress bar right here for the update status right if you look closely to the right hand side you can see an icon so you're going to go ahead and click the icon this is to update the firmware of the connected vest so let's go ahead and click on download Right. and then uploading new firmware will clear all settings on your fog box and you have to do the configuration again do you want to continue yes all right then you're gonna go ahead and click yes as you can see this is the progress of the update all right so update is finished and as you can see uh automatically disconnected the vest uh not connected at the bottom as you can see so you're gonna have to reconnect it after a few seconds all right let's go ahead and reconnect connect first let's go ahead and check the firmware and as you can see now the firmware is uh, 23.46 successfully updated all right now we can go back to the welcome screen we select the mode setup wizard next okay all right so here we're gonna go ahead and set the current limits this is already set to 60 amps and uh the break to negative 60 amps and then the battery current max is set to 60 amps which uh, seems to be too high let me dial it down to 40 amps why not and then we're gonna go ahead and then uh, and then you have battery current region which is negative 30 amps i'm gonna leave this as is and then we're gonna click next all right would you like to configure soft battery cutoff let's click yes all right from here we can just select how many cells we have so this battery right now is a tennis battery i'm just using this for the test but the battery i will be building on part three of this video series is going to be a 12s battery meaning 12 cells in series uh, which is going to be around uh, 50 volts when fully charged but since we're using a tennis battery pack for this test we're gonna have to put 10s all right so remember to click the tiny apply button next to it and then you're gonna go ahead and click next all right so here is the sensors page you can choose sensors or sensorless here we have the sensor wires connected just select all sensor go ahead and click next click on the interrogation mark right here on the first uh, on the first tile and it's gonna explain to you how everything works on this page right here uh, after that you can go ahead and go to the next the second tile which is to measure the resistance and uh, inductance 
So let's go ahead and click RL and then you're going to read that the motor is going to make some noise which is normal. Let's go ahead and hit OK. I don't know if you can hear that. All right. Now the motors have made some noises and as you can see now we have some great marks. It's everywhere meaning that it was successfully measured. This is going to give the VESC an idea of uh, the size of the motor, the resistance, and the inductance. That's why these are marked in green. Alright, then you're going to go to the third tile, which is the flux linkage. So let's measure that. Click on the third tile. And as you can see, please hand spin each motor to detect flux linkage. Click OK, and then you're going to hand spin each motor. As you can see, and everything is measured, ready to go. So after doing all of this, now you have all green boxes, meaning that everything is checked out. All right, you're gonna go ahead and click on apply. This is gonna get written into the memory of the vest, and then you can go ahead and hit next. Detect the whole sensors. You can decide how many amps you want to apply to the motors for this detection. By default, it's set to 10 amps, which is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the tiny icon right here. And it's gonna detect, all right? So the motors are gonna turn slowly. This is where it's gonna make the motor spin. So you're gonna hit OK. And as you can see, the motors are spinning slowly. All right, so it has detected the whole sensors. So you're gonna go ahead and hit apply. Always remember to apply, otherwise it's not gonna save the results, all right? Apply, all sensors parameters apply, all right? So let's go ahead and hit next, and you can go ahead and hit finish. And here you have done with the motor setup. Next, you're gonna go ahead and program your controller. Turn on the remote. Then we're gonna select the third tile from the bottom, input setup wizard, hit next, hit yes. All right, so the first option here is if you have a single best setup like I do here, so you're gonna select that and hit next. Here you have PPM input, which is what I have. This is the first tile remote that I have, as you can see here. This is for regular RC. It's called a PPM controller. Hit next. And from here you have your throttle mapping. As you can see, as you squeeze the trigger, you can see the position on the screen. Just like this. So here what you want to do is to engage it all the way for acceleration and engage it all the way for braking. Let it go back to zero and then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. All right, as you can see on the zero position, you can read zero at the center, as you can see in percentage. This means that you have a uh, calibrated the remote. And uh, next. If you have a, a slight delay when accelerating or braking, you can configure it here. I usually leave this by default and uh, it's always been great. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead and write everything to the best and then you're gonna hit next and finish. And now, as you can see, we are fully in business. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the support and we're gonna test it. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be like a draft. I'm gonna refine it later and see if the screw holes line up. 
I forgot to make the gap over here for the wires in the back but that's not a biggie because this is a first draft push button fits nicely So the final version of the enclosure is 3D printed. I think that this should fit perfectly. Mount the push button. This is in, as you can see, flush. This one is a LED for the status. It's gonna be right here. So I ended up removing the metal plate from the bottom of the ESE. Now it should work just fine. All right. Now it should be flush, as you can see. So everything is tight, ready to go. Here is how flush it is with the deck. Uh, the design also take in consideration how curved the deck is. So as you can see, it's perfectly lined up with the deck. So that's really nice. As you can see, it's uh, not bad. So I have a temporary bed reconnected. So we're gonna turn it on. All right, that's on. Let's turn on the remote. Alright, so everything is working as expected. The next step is going to be the battery. I'm gonna build a battery for it and I would design uh, a custom made enclosure for it also because the original boosted board enclosure is not gonna fit a 12 s 2P battery pack using 18650s. So I'm going to have to design my own enclosure like I did with the ESC enclosure. You're going to have to subscribe and stay tuned for part 3. I already started recording part 3. As you can see here, this is the battery I would be building for the booster board. This is a 12S2P battery pack along with a 3D printed enclosure. Obviously, I'm gonna uh, 3D print the enclosure black so it can match the original boosted board. And this is just a, a draft to check the fit. All right, so yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe and stay tuned. I will be posting part three soon.